This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. All around us, there are invisible waves of energy. Some of them come from space, some of them come from the Earth, and some of them come from us. These waves make up the radio spectrum, and they're all yours. Sort of. The radio spectrum is considered a public resource, sort of like the national park system, except it's electromagnetic and moving at the speed of light. So it's... That, that would be a pretty cool park, though. But that doesn't mean they can use them whenever they want, broadcasting whatever they want. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber ventures into the secret lair of a pirate radio station to find out how these buccaneers of the airwaves might be stealing our precious electromagnetic booty and using it for good. Chicago's had a rich history of pirate radio. In fact, there was a, there was a station in, uh, I think, Robert Taylor Holmes, uh, where it was run by uh, uh, gangbangers, and they would play, uh, you know, hip-hop, but if one of them saw the cops, then they would play the theme to Hawaii Five-0 or something uh, to alert all their uh, uh, drug dealers and stuff that the cops are on their way. This is Bill Milos, lifelong radio enthusiast. Bill agreed to let us interview him if we didn't show his face. Because just like those gangbangers, he also runs a pirate radio station right here out of his apartment. It, it doesn't quite fit the typical definition of pirate radio, but it is true that I'm without a license for this. Yeah, and operating a radio station without a license is a serious crime. The fine can range up to $30,000. Mm -hmm. There's no jail time involved, and they seize your equipment. Then why doesn't this radio spectrum scoff law become a law-abiding citizen and get a license? Typical person who wants a radio station in Chicago, you have to buy an existing license. The FCC requires that stations be spaced a certain way on the dial so they don't interfere with one another, and all the, all the available frequencies in Chicago are taken. So you'd have to buy an existing radio station for about $2 million is the going price. Okay. And, um, well, you know, I, I, I just don't have quite enough money for that. I, I, I'm saving up. Yeah. But Bill isn't really afraid the FCC is going to come and bust him for operating a pirate radio station. That's not why he didn't want us to show his face. He just doesn't want people to recognize him on the street. Because much of his listening audience is within a square mile of where he lives, hence the need for anonymity. And he broadcasts 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he's been doing it for five years now. So tell me a little bit about that. Like, okay, how did you start it? Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an insomniac. So I've wanted something that would occupy uh, my mind and distract me and relax me, but not something that would be so fascinating that I would want to stay awake to hear it. I've always been a fan of radio drama. And uh, of course, the, the, f the 40s and 50s are, are a golden age of radio drama in the United States and around the world. And I'm also a fan of film noir. So I started listening to the police procedurals, hard-boiled detective stories and stuff like that from that era. And uh, I found I could listen to that and I really didn't care if they ever caught the murderer. I, you know they will. So you, I would fall asleep. So a, as I was listening to this stuff here at home, I thought, well, why don't I try streaming this? Before long, I picked up, you know, I have typically a thousand listeners right now. Uh, on the stream. So what I'm doing, I, I have an internet radio stream called Audio Noir, which I then uh, broadcast on a, a small FM transmitter here from my apartment. I find that my listenership peaks around 2 a.m. And I believe that most of my listeners are also using it to go to sleep. So there are people listening uh, on the radio uh, here in Chicago. I, I couldn't tell you how many. My signal is, is under 30 watts. My antenna is only about 40 feet high and so I only get out about a mile. Um, it's a blank space on the radio dial that I just put a little content in for people who want to hear it. Yeah, so why why broadcast then if it... Because you know, uh, you, you, you're already streaming on the internet. Yeah, um, well, because I can. So initially it was just, why not? You know, and I wanted to experiment with the equipment and the technology and I'm always interested in that kind of a thing. And so I just fed the stream in, and then after, shortly after feeding the stream in, I was contacted by a few people who said, this is great, I love this. So for them, you know, I keep it going. It doesn't take much effort on my part. Yeah, even though what Bill is doing is illegal, the fact that he uses a blank space on the radio dial and that he has no complaints probably keeps him out of trouble. And his chances of being found out by the FCC are pretty slim. So the FCC doesn't have the field staff they used to. There's been a reduction in budget for federal enforcement. So you have a situation where you have laws, like pollution laws, but you don't have anyone to go out and test to see if it's, there's pollution. So if they get a complaint, they might investigate. If they get multiple complaints, they will investigate. 
Uh, they, but they don't just randomly drive around listening for pirates. They, they, they can't. They're too busy, you know. So if we think of the radio spectrum as a natural resource, like a national park, the FCC is supposed to be the park rangers. But there just aren't enough of them to patrol the park. But that doesn't mean all pirate radio stations are out there polluting the unspoiled wilderness of our airwaves. In Boston, there's a fantastic uh, pirate radio scene. There's a big Haitian community there. And there's a station, they just, they, they're an actual commercial operation. They bought a tower, they bought real transmitting equipment, they just borrowed somebody else's, not borrowed, but stole somebody else's call sign, and they've got like 10,000 watts and they cover the Boston area. They sell commercials and they play music for the Haitian community. And they get shut down every year or two by the FCC, but they make so much money that they just come back on. But you don't need much money to make a difference with pirate radio. In Springfield, Illinois, Mabana Kentaku started a pirate radio station in his low-income housing development. He used it to fight police abuse, organize a tenants' rights organization, and give the people of his community a voice. So this guy, and he would get busted all the time. And, but he said, you know, I haven't got any money. What are they going to do to me? You can't go to jail for it. So someone would give him another transmitter, and he would set it up, and they would come and take it away. They, they could issue fines. But how, he's never going to pay it. He's, he's, he's 70 years old. He's on Social Security. He, you know, he, he's living in public housing. He's got nothing they can take. In places like South America and Africa and Asia, people still listen to shortwave. So there's still a viable long distance radio service over there. Because they don't have that much access to the internet? I'm something? guessing that's why. Yeah, so do you think like a lot of the sort of pirate <coughs> radio stations that we have now I think, do you think the main purpose of them is to serve underserved communities? I think, I think more and more you're going to see, uh, you're going to see that. But there is also um, little niches like mine, you know, this old time radio drama stuff, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of little uh, segments that get served by it. But the typical radio station with a DJ, I think, I think you'll see less and less of that on Pirate and uh, more things that are serving some small niche or uh, a community that doesn't have an outlet. You want to be a good pirate citizen, you know. So what do you think? Are these pirate radio stations providing a public service or are they just a nuisance, spoiling our pristine natural resource that is the radio spectrum? Let us know in the comments or by shortwave. We might have to get a receiver then to hear you if you send by shortwave. We don't have one right now. So just hold on, hold off on the short wave. If you'd like to check out Bill Milo's pirate radio station, Audio Noir, there is a link to his stream in the doobly-doo. Or if you live in Chicago, you might be able to pick up his broadcast on 89.7 FM, if you're lucky. Don't forget to like and subscribe over here. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. We are completely supported by Patreon, so if you'd like to help keep us on the air, if you will, ha, um, support us on our Patreon page. It's linked somewhere. And thank you for watching.